Hi folks, this is Alistair from selfassemblysites.com. In this short video, I'm going to have a quick look at the WordPress 3.4 beta, which has just been released. I'm going to show you the major difference between 3.4 and 3.3.1. And I'm going to have a quick run through the other behind the scenes changes. What I'm going to show you first is I've got a 3.4 beta install here, and I've got a very, very similar 3.3.1 install here. So I'm going to open up the Manage Themes section in both sites. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Install Themes on both. And I'm going to go to Recently Updated. So here in the current production 3.3.1, we can see the different versions that we have here. So, and if we go to the new beta, we can see that they have removed all of the text description so that we have a much cleaner grid interface. That's the very first change you get to see. Next is if we choose a theme, we get a kind of a, a frame-like interface. And if we do the same here, you'll see that we get the standard preview. So if I actually install the theme on the beta, I'm going to do the same here on the current production version. Install now. So it's installed on both. I'm not going to activate yet, I'm going to go back to themes. So you can see how it looks on both. So this is the beta, and this is the current production version. Again, you can see the themes page is just a little bit cleaner with the descriptions being removed, except for the current theme. It keeps the description here for the current theme, but these have been removed. And then the other thing you'll notice is that on the beta, on 3.4, we have this customize link. So if I click on customize, it opens up again the preview. And again, this is a preview of the actual live site that we have installed here. And we can do things like we can change the background. So we can add a background image. We can change the header, the colors. We can set the main navigation menu. So this is a main navigation menu here. So you can see you can set it to different if you have different menus installed in your system. And then if we hit save, which is just below the bottom of this video, there's a button that's called save. And the settings are saved. And this is the only concern I have with this uh, new interface. Settings are saved and the theme is actually activated. So I would expect that a button called save would save the settings that I've, I've customized. I would not expect it to activate the theme. So if we go back out, we can hit refresh and we see the new theme installed with the settings that we had. So that's the first major uh, change is the, the new theme interface and I think it's mostly a good thing. I w would have concerns about save versus activate. They should have a save and activate button or also have a save for later. So that's the first change. So I'm just going to reset it to the 2011 theme. And now if I click on header here and run headers here. Okay, so you'll see you can upload a custom header image in the current 3.3.1. Uh, you can upload this custom header by choosing from your computer, or you can choose one of the default, pretty cool default images that come with the theme. And the same on the beta install. You can choose an image from your computer, or you can also pick one of their images. But they do have another option, which is choose from your image library. So this is the media library that you have which you can access if you go to Media Library or Media Add New. And you can see that I've uploaded an image here. So I can just pick this image and set it as the header and save that. So that's the second uh, change in dealing with the theme. There's another uh, change with the theme that you won't get to see, but which could be quite useful to you, uh, which is they will now allow people to place templates for page templates in subdirectories of the theme. This is quite useful if you've got a theme 
with a lot of different page templates and you can put those in a subdirectory and they will be automatically detected. They look for page templates in any direct subdirectory of the theme. So that's very useful for theme developers and for people who have a lot of different page templates. Other changes that might be useful are the APIs for app developers, for mobile app developers and for web application developers. So the new APIs for theme designers. There are a lot of performance improvements and there are internationalization improvements so to do with um, choosing different languages and finally there is the ability to install a theme from the wp.org directory as a child theme so what that would do is actually if you install a child theme it'll install the parent theme as well so that your child theme install will work correctly another change is the editing of comments directly in the post page in the edit post page so for example on this uh, default site I've got the, uh, the usual hello world post and the standard comment. So I'm just going to go into edit. So this is the edit post page. And if I scroll down here, I can see that the comments are actually appearing directly in the page. And I can do my edit in here. So I can change the comment, update the comment directly in the edit post page here. There's another cool change which will be appreciated by a lot of people who want to use attributions. So if I search, for example, if I search for um, your CC image, and what I want to do is I just want to find an image here that I want to include in the blog post. So I'm just going to use attribution, so I'm just going to pick this one here from Sol Revolver. View all sizes. So I'm just going to use this image as is, uh, Sol Revolver. So what I can do now is I think we to edit my post and I'm going to insert this image. And there's the URL there. Sol Revolver's username and it's Hitchcock Vertigo is the name of the image. Hitchcock Vertigo 2 get the name get the name right we used to just be able to put text in here but now what I'm able to do is I'm actually able to put a link a href around all of that so this is the code for a link and what I can do is I can go back for this image and I can actually put that link in there so now I'm going to insert that image and if I just update this page and view it, I can see now that I've embedded the image and we can see that that caption is now a link. I can add HTML in here. And what that will do is that will allow me to attribute an image directly Usually what you have to do is put the, the text in here and then put the link at the bottom of the post. So that's kind of cool. And you can see the HTML added here. So that's another nice feature that a lot of people will like in WordPress 3.4. So that's the major changes and improvements in WordPress 3.4 beta. It should be coming the full version in May, assuming that there are no major bugs or roadblocks. So try it out, see if you like it. Let me know if you like it by uh, replying to the video. If you like the video, please hit like, or if you want to receive more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Cheers.